Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video, I am going to tell you how to analyze cladogram and phylogenetic tree. And especially, you know, uh, all the pictures that you probably have seen in CS and net exam from the cladogram analysis, how to depict them, how to crack that code and finally get to the answer. That's what we actually prepare in this video. So first of all, to start solving problems on cladogram analysis, the first thing that I should tell you is regarding the structure of cladogram and what it actually represents you know if you look at here uh, uh, what a cladogram looks like it usually says about relationships you know relationship between different organisms together and how exactly we come to know the relationship by looking at different structure like morphology anatomy and genetic uh, nature and everything of that organism together but what we know is that different species uh, somehow in this picture you can see they are connected to a certain point and then those are further connected to a certain point so if you begin uh, here from from one straight line first branching takes place at a place the first initial branching is known as the root root just like a tree the root is something that actually embedded into the soil the same thing happens here root is the start initiator where the branching begins now once if you look at each of these branching points it moved there and afterwards again further branching happens now if you look at two consecutive branching, this is the second, this is the third, two consecutive branching and, and the distance between the two branching is known as the internal nodes. Just like the tree, you know, there are nodes, there are internal nodes, that's the distance between two different branch points. And these are known as the branch points. And obviously the ultimate branch that we can see, known as the terminal branch, okay. And uh, the distance between uh, the terminal branch point and the first initial branch point is known as internal branch or also known as the internode. Now these are a simple uh, nomenclature of the different structures of the cladogram which you may need to know, may not, doesn't matter at all. But what I'm going to share now is more important. You know cladogram is going to give us information regarding how two organisms are linked, whether th those two organisms share characteristics of their ancestor or they differ in terms of characteristics from their ancestor. We can actually check that. So if you look at here, this is more important and where we talk about different terms like homoplasy, auto or tapomorphy, plesomorphy, epomorphy, synapomorphy. What do we mean by all these different name and nomenclatures? So that's uh, the more important thing here. First of all, let's look at homoplasy. Homoplasy is a character shared by a set of species but not present in their common ancestor. Okay. So, not present in the ancestor, but shared by distant species. So, you can see this is, in this picture in the left hand side, we have example of each of this type. And here we can see only two <coughs> different color code. One is the gray one, another one is the black one. The gray color means uh, the trait is ancestral, the black color means the trait is derived. That's all. So, if you look at the ancestors, all have the gray. Right. So at the end, if you look at the new species also with the gray, that means no uh, change in terms of any of the characteristics from the ancestor and the new species. Although if ancestor is gray and new species is black, that means there is change in terms of uh, new characters are derived from the ancestral. Right. Now, if you look at homoplasy, it's a character shared by a set of species, but not present in the common ancestor. If you look at here that common ancestor does not have any of the feature but new features originated in two individuals which are not which are directly linked through the common ancestor but that was not present in the ancestor that is homoplasy first thing is done the second thing autapomorphy autapomorphy is a distinct feature known as the derived trait unique to a given taxon taxon is a branch every single type so autapomorphy distinct feature derived feature so if you look at this one this is the example of autapomorphy. Here you can see that all the individuals share the characteristic like their ancestor. This is the ancestor. But this one, uh, let's assume it is X, species X, has the derived character. So this is autapomorphy. Third one, pleisomorphy. Pleisomorphy refers to ancestral trait that usually is uh, in reference to a derived trait. A pleisomorphic trait is also shared with other taxa that have an earlier last common ancestor with the taxa under consideration. What does that mean? If you look at the example of pleisomorphy, you can check the ancestral state that is shared by other individuals. So the ancestral trait, both, this is the ancestral trait, gray color, 
this species X and Y also ancestral trait. So pleiosomorphic character in nature. Or apomorphy. What is apomorphy? Apomorphy means derived trait. A novel evolutionary trait that is unique to a particular species and all its descendants and which can be used as a defining character for a species or a group. So that is apomorphy. So if you look at it, apomorphy means its derived trait means new feature compared with the ancestral but that trait is shared by more than one taxon. So here you can see two different individual coming from this branch point shares this derived or, or character. So we call it apomorphic character. Now the last fifth one, synapomorphy. What is synapomorphy? It's a shared derived character or trait. Now the difference between apomorphy and synapomorphy is in synapomorphy, the character which are derived shared by terminal taxon their ancestor also had that character while in apomorphy what we can see in apomorphy although the terminal taxa has that character but their ancestor does not have that character in the first place so that's the difference between apomorphy and synapomorphy so if we draw uh, the difference will something like this is apomorphy derived derived but ancestral in the center but synapomorphy derived derived ancestor is also derived right that's the idea of synapomorphy that's the all five different relationship and believe me you are going to get question from this part almost every single time in csr net exam now let's look at another example this of the same thing but with a different color code so you can see synapomorphy simply means shared derived character autapomorphy means uniquely derived character simply isomorphy means shared ancestral character so that's all so if you look at in this picture you start with a and a c comes together then a c e that means you know this is individual one uh, this is two this is three four five different species we are, we are looking at so here a is the ancestral and c is derived so we call c as apomorphic okay now we can see a c e once a c d once a b once that means all of them shares a so obviously a is pleisomorphic why because shared ancestral character that's why we call a is pleosomorphic now c is present between this individual four and three which is also shared by their common ancestor so we call them what synapomorphy c is synapomorphic character shared derived character and d e b these are totally unique character and is fixed to one particular taxon in each case so that means d e these are autapomorphic character so that's all that's how simple it is right so this is enough about the theory now let's go to math problems how to solve this cladogram problems first of all what kind of problem you will get the problems you will get here either will be represented in terms of data set numbers like this or providing cladogram directly so if they provide cladogram they will they, they will ask you the relationship between different species here in the cladogram or if they provide you the data set they ask you to construct the cladogram and find out the right cladogram that depicts that data set okay so how to exactly solve it so the, the problem we call it the Wagner method to solve the easiest method to solve it okay because while you are looking at uh, this data set you can check one thing very clearly actually this data set represents this cladogram which you can see this is a question so this is an answer how to construct this cladogram from the data set the easiest method is the Wagner method what says simply that first of all when let's say four or five different species are given in this case four different species given species X A B C now among the four species or five whatever number of species they provide you you need to find out the out group now what is a out group out group is you know uh, it's like uh, the base base means you know it's like uh, one example uh, including which or using which you determine the changes of properties or features of different species compared with the ancestor so our group is the most ancestral trait and in this case we have all values to be set as zero okay all values to be zero so whenever you're looking at the characteristics uh, here we can see characteristics of one two three four five and all these cases the out group values are given as zero and then zero means zero means ancestral trait one means derived okay 
So for five separate characters, we can see our group means all of them are ancestral. So we call the individual. In this case, it was written that this 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 species is out group. But even it's not written, let's say they said it's D species D or species X, we can easily figure out that it is out group. The out group one is the one carrying maximum characteristic like the ancestral type. So this is the out group here. Okay. So once you know the out group, because you'll put the out group totally separated while drawing the cladogram, and based on which you will compare with the out group with individual species A, B, C. That the more related to out group will be more close to out group, more linked with out group, the distantly related will be differently placed. So if you look at here, the number of ancestral trait and number of derived trait, that's what we need to compare. So in out group, all ancestral. So we don't need to bother about that. We can separate it out at the very beginning. So this is the very first step: selecting the out group, separate it out. Second step is to check the number of derived character present in each species. So if you look at A, the number of derived character is one. And the character number one, character number five, so only two. For B, character one, two, and four, it's totally three. And for C, it's one, three, and four again three. So Wagner method states that the species with more ancestral trait derived earlier, and the species with newer trait, newer derived trait. Is the terminal taxa. So in this picture, we can tell one thing clearly: they put out group away first, then A will be placed, then B and C will be placed, and that's how it's placed actually. You can see out group is separated at the beginning, then A is separated, then from a branch point B and C separate. Now one more question remains: if we compare between A, B, C, all of them shares one trait, that is trait number one. All of them have that trait. Now between A and B, there is no more similarity because The derived trait for B is one, where A has the ancestral. Derived trait for B is four, A is ancestral. So there is no similarity at all. But if we compare B and C together, you can see, apart from character number one, which is, which is true, which is same for all A, B, C. We are not bothered about that. But unique character that is shared between B and C are character number four, same between B and C. But there is no character same apart from one between A and B. That means. B and C more closely related than A and B, and we all know that A B C shares one character, one derived character. So obviously, A B C are linked with some common ancestor that we know from there. Got it? So we know that this is the common ancestor which shares A B C, all of them from there. A B C, all of them are separated, but A will be separated first because B will B and C will be more linked because they have shared character number four together. So character four is shared by B and C. Now B has its unique feature of character two, while C has a unique feature of character number three. That's why we put two. That that is a new derived trait for B. Three is a new derived character for C. That's all, right? And where we put character number one here, because one is carried by both A, B, and C. Now remember one thing: while you're marking this cladogram with different characteristics, you should position the characteristics in places. Where exactly they are shared. If you put one here, that means any any of the species listed downside here having that character. And actually, it's true. A, B, C all has one. That's why we put one here. Four is before B and C. That means B and C both share character number four, and that's true as you can see here, right? So this is how you should draw the cladogram, and that's how easy it is to solve it with Wagner method. Okay. Now let's move on to a set of questions trying to solve. Uh, different cladograms. Sample problems to solve. First of all, very easy problem. Which among the following species can be an outgroup based on the phylogeny shown below? Now, remember outgroup, which is separated at the beginning first from a branch point, and that is in this case one. It's totally separated. While one, two, three, four, five, they all share a common ancestor. So one is definitely the outgroup. Easy as water. Species two is most closely related to species which of the following species? Now, another very important question. Now, people make mistake by comparing species which are present nearby. But we should always look after one thing. You should always check where exactly those species are linked in their ancestry. In this case, two and three uh, are linked with one common ancestor. So what we can tell is that yes, two is most closely linked with three, not any of the other. From the following cladogram, which conclusions about the evolution relationships of species A to H can be drawn? So it says the species F is more closely related to G 
then f to h d is more close related to e than d to c f is more close related to a than f to g and d is more close related to a than d to g so you can compare f and g and f and h it says that f and g more close related than f and h true or false false f and g and f and h both of them shares the common ancestor at the same point so this is not true false d and e more closely related than d and c again false because they are linked with a common ancestor at a point so again false f and a f and a more closely related now let me change the color a little bit here so that you can check the difference okay f and a more closely related than f and g now this is very interesting if you look at it in f and g the common ancestor is the first or root right the root ancestor but f and a is directly linked by this first common ancestor over here right or you can say the second because if root is the first so this is the second so you can see f and a if we if we pull them if we if we continue to watch their root we can see that they are connected at a point which we haven't found in case of uh, f and g it's not possible there so yes it is correct f and a is more closely related than f and g d and a more closely related than d and g the same thing here yes d and a more closely related because there is a direct link here in the third common ancestor there so yes it is also true so last two statements are true the first two are false identify the most appropriate cladogram that can be constructed using the data matrix given now exactly the like the problem that we discussed earlier so what it looks like again you can see a b c d four different species are given and actually it is a csi net question from the last few years back so you can see here a b c d now first of all what you need to do step number 1 find the out group so finding the out group which is the out group here all ancestral zero means ancestral so a is the out group let's remove a from the equation so now we know that a should be placed totally separated in in which of the following pictures you can see a is separated in a a is separated in b totally but in c and d not separated so c and d definitely are not the options so we eliminate 50% of the options but knowing only one thing that is how to put out group away now let's move on b number of uh, similarities here two two derived characters here with the help of wagner method c one derived character d three derived character now what does that mean that means we should place b and c so c should be placed after a then b then d uh, the, definitely right so if you look at here again you can see that b c d all shares the character number 2 now if you look at uh, the the similarity other than uh, feature number 2 b and c as well as uh, c and d does not share any character but b and d shared character number 3 that means b and d more closely related than b c does or c d does so b and d will be connected by some ancestor so we will find the option with the picture where b and d connected by a common ancestor and that is option b where b and d connected by a common ancestor right so option b is the correct option so if you practice this question you will be able to get to answer this question within 30 seconds not more than that 30 seconds to 1 minute maximum that's how easy it is to answer okay and now this one a little complicated perhaps again a csi net question based on the coefficient of association table given below which of the following taxonomic phenogram of relationship is correct so first of all what this data set actually means here we don't have 0 and 1 we have different fraction of values now you need to understand one thing coefficient of association means you can check here s and s together gives a matrix of 1 t and t 1 w and w 1 x and x 1 that means here the data set is actually telling us the similarity between two species and as s and s are identical 100% similar so put 1 t and t 100% similar 1 x and x 100% similar 1 so 1 means they are 100% similar right and if we compare now s with t you see point a that means 80% similar so this is a similar uh, index that is given how much they are linked in terms of their similarity that is provided now using this value we need to construct a cladogram and actually you don't need to construct it it's already given what you need to do 
is simply tell which one is correct option among this four now you can check here in this all pictures they are also given from 0 to 1 scale that means 1 means 100% similar 0 means ancestral so the character we are looking 0 means ancestral 1 means derived and how this process works let's look at it so first of all you can see the maximum similarity present between uh, the values 0 0.9 0 0.9 between w and x here 0 0.9 between y and z 0 0.9 and point A that is between S and T. So that means W, X, Y, Z, S and T, they will be connected by a very close common ancestor. And that's true. In fact, all of this picture says that W, X, S, T, Y, Z are connected. So this information will not help you to getting close to, you, to your answer. Now let's move on to the second thing. The second thing is how they are linked in terms of uh, little variations. Now, if you look at here now, after point 8, we are looking at point 6, that is between T and x 0.6 this one t and x then again near value of 0.6 is 0.5 between s and w sw also 0.5 and uh, tw 0.7 so if you look at tx t and x here t and x the common ancestor is this one far away from the derived trait although the value is not that far S and W, S and W, again the same thing, they are coming at the same point. In this case, T and X comes down here and S and W also comes down here. In option C, T and X comes down again, far. In option D, T and X again came far. Now, this is a very interesting note that if we look at here, the similarity index that is given in this picture, that the more closely linked means wx wx was uh, 8 uh, i mean st st was 8.8 .8. and uh, tw if you look at tw tw is 0.7 and tw is placed far away 8 is present so close there is something in the middle because you can see here this is the common ancestor between s and t gives a score of 80 percent similarity now between t and w the similarity is 0.7 means 70 percent but according to this picture, it, the similarity should be far less. So this picture is not correct. So as this picture, so as this picture. So the only picture that depicts this correctly is the option number B. Let's check it one more time. Between Y and T, you can see here Y and T gives the place here. And the similarity between Y and T, 1 means 10% only. So this, this is 10%, this is 70%. And these are 90%. So it's proper representation because you're going from ancestral to derived 0 to 1. And that should be the way they can be arranged from 10%, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90 like this. So option B should be the correct way to depict this idea. Try to understand this. If this make you feel difficulty to understand, you rewatch this section of the video again and again. What I mean actually is that the more they are similar, the higher the score. And they're closely they're linked in terms of ancestry, which we found between ST, WX, and YZ. That's true. But if we go back one step further, then the options that is given 0 0.7, 70%, and then 0 0.1 means 10% should be placed like this. But in other options, 0.7 is given in the first root ancestry, and that should never be the option. That should never be the answer, right? Now, one more thing you can check that. But that ST is a little backward than WX and YZ because ST has 80%. WX and YZ had 90%. That is well represented as well because these are the line for ST, uh, WX and YZ and ST is little back. So this is 90 earlier and ST was 80. Now if you go backward a little bit, let's look at W and T or something like that. W and T 70% that is here. Then you can also check the X and T. You can say X and T also, 60% there and 10%. So this option B should be the correct representation uh, of this data set that is given. So in net exam, they will not ask you to draw uh, the cladogram on your own, which will be far difficult, believe me. So they will just, uh, they want you to find out the right one. So that's quite easy to, to perform actually. So this is how you solve it. Now, if you belong to any graduation, post-graduation, you may need to construct the cladogram and put the characteristics by which the cladogram is also organized. 
so i hope you understand this video if you don't again rewatch the video and i believe i will you will get it so that's all if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that thank you